Hey, everybody. Welcome to Recruiter Roundtables, um, season two, number five, business development and getting clients revisited. As I had mentioned earlier, you know, this is a repeat of some stuff we've done before, plus some added new stuff that I thought we'd all go over and, you know, help those who need help in developing clients or just getting business or looking at new ways to do it. So um, if anybody wants to ask any questions before we get started, before I jump right in, I hate to be a, a screen hog and all that. So please, uh, you know, if anybody who's not come has any questions about the format or anything, ask away. I'm going to give open this up for some questions. So go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. Fine. <laughs> so um, the four things that I mentioned uh, were assumptive opening, marketing the MPC, the kiss or keep it simple, stupid email, and then ambulance chasing on LinkedIn sales navigator. Since we all kind of know what marketing the MPC is, I thought we kind of, you know, hit, hit that to the back. Do you guys want to talk about the assumptive opening? The ambulance chasing or the kiss email first. Any any preference on that? Just go with the assumptive opening. Okay. No so deal. assumptive opening works really well in a strong market, right? Where there's lots of let's say a candidate driven market, right? So in my world right now, civil structural um architectural engineering florida's got a very low unemployment rate maryland's got a one point one percent unemployment rate overall and the construction market hot is here uh georgia is the same way so that's kind of a very simple hi rich my name is tom alashio you and i have spoken before i'm a hunter specialized in construction and engineering we just got done a search with ag tech engineering in fairfax and um for a structural engineer and we stumbled across a little rumor that you guys also need a structural engineer too now i have no reason to believe that rumor is true but that's the reason for my call uh, are you guys currently looking for a structural engineer right so it rolls right into i know your industry i just filled a search for a competitor right i mentioned the competitor by name and i heard you guys were looking now a lot of the times they're going to be like, yeah, we are looking. And then you can roll into, you know, what have you even been doing? How many people are interviewing? Do you have recruiters working on it? Yada, yada, yada. Or no, we don't. And then you just roll into, I'm sorry, you know, using my, you could say my team's good or whatever, but maybe it's a different division or maybe it's a different position. That's when you roll into like the fact finding. We call call it on every cold call, right? What is your object, objective of a cold call, right? Your objective is a cold call a lot of times with an NPC or this is to get a job order, right? But there's a lot more objectives that you can fulfill on a cold call if you get the conversation going well, right? So it's an alternate job, right? Do you have another opening, an alternate hiring manager, right? Do you, do you guys use recruiters? Do you pay fees, right? And that is a question not only can you ask a hiring manager, but you can also ask anybody like a, a candidate, right? If a candidate's not telling you like oh, i'm not interested i'm not interested i can't do this and, and you are and able to get into that small talk conversation where you feel like it's a good rapport going back and forth well what about your company do they use recruiters do you have any openings do you guys pay fees and then back to the assumptive opening call okay has it have you gotten called by recruiters lately do you know of anybody that's hiring you know maybe it was a company that sounded like yours i mean it's it takes a lot more than just saying it over and over you can't just go through like this but, you know, Rich and I were talking Wednesday on Animal Show. It's a small talk thing. It's, you know, Rich brought up the thing about the food network, right? He can start rapport with someone on the phone, same way I can, right? Where all of a sudden you're talking about something different and then you can ask those questions, right? With a hiring manager who says, no, we don't have any openings. No, we don't pay fees. Our HR department's got it locked down. Well, let me ask you a question. Would you consider a job change if the right one came along? Are you open for opportunities? Every single phone call that you get on, there's five or six things you can do to get information about the client, about the person you're talking to, about the people they work with. And then last but not least is the LinkedIn. Let's connect on LinkedIn if anything changes. But what happens so often is so many people default to that. They go in there with their MPC call or their assumptive opening. And then the guy says, no, we don't have an opening or no, we don't pay fees. And they go, okay, well, how about we connect on LinkedIn? If anything changes, give me a call, right? And you think, oh, I'm building my network. But you did what every other recruiter does and you are not remembered. And you may have heard me say, um, you know, mad or glad, right? When you're on a phone call, the person you're talking to, when you hang up that phone, do you want that person to be 
happy and excited and, and remember you or mad and pissed off, but still remember you, right? You want that person to remember the person they spoke to. So when you call back up a week, a month, whatever later and say, hey, this is, you know, a Matt Sylvie with FYZ Consulting, he remembers who you are, not and goes, who? I'm sorry, what was your name? Who do you work with? What are you calling for? You failed. I failed. If I call somebody today that I spoke with a month ago and they don't remember who I am, I failed on that call. I didn't make an impact on them that makes them remember who I am. I use a trick, right? I say often, and I use this with men more than women, hey, I get it, you're not interested, but yeah, take my number and put it behind your wife's picture. <laughs> if the hit shits the fan or you get laid off, call me first before you call her, right? It starts out a little like, what do you mean my wife's picture? And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you're thinking about me. And then the people laugh at that, they remember that. They remember the fucking asshole who said, put their phone number behind their wife's picture, right? And that's what every call is supposed to be about. Okay, one second, Tom, is them remembering you. If you can't get a job order or an alternate job order or a candidate out of the call, make sure the person remembers you. And I don't care if he remembers you because he, because he was happy or he's pinched because you won't stop talking and won't try to overcome his objections. Yes, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, using that acceptance opening <clears throat> as an example, my challenge is getting somebody on the phone, period. I find myself having to leave voicemail messages. Would you leave a voicemail message, Tom? And if so, what would it sound like? On the third attempt, I always leave a voicemail message with candidates and clients. And it would be okay. very similar to that. Hey, Tom, this is Tom Alashio. I'm a head on or I specialize <laughs> in you know, engineering. We just got done a search for XYZ Corporation in your backyard for a project manager. And we heard you guys were looking for a project manager as well. I'm following up on that, right? Is it going to get your call back every time? No, but you're at least able, that guy's going to hear that instead of, I am a headhunter. I want to talk to you about your pain points. Give me a call, right? What, what you're trying to do with the assumptive opening, with the ambulance chasing, with the stuff that I do is immediately give the client or potential client some type of bragging without bragging, right? So by saying, I just filled a search with your indirect competitor or direct competitor or a company you know, you've automatically said, I know your industry, I'm successful in it. And then when you say, I heard a rumor that you guys needed a project manager or whatever it is, you also are, you have your ear to the rail or whatever it is, <clears throat> so you know what's going on. That's kind of that, you know, um, I know everything. I know your industry, you should talk to me. It doesn't, and look, I say this a million times. I'm really good at overcoming objections, but it doesn't work every time. I'm really good at the assumptive call, but it doesn't work every time, right? It's it's doing it and getting better at it and practicing and just getting comfortable doing that. And a lot of times too, and Rich and I had talked about this, and I think Ernie as well, hey Ernie, that it's a lot of time it's timing, right? But when you're doing this, when you're sending the emails and the connection requests and the phone calls, it's a lot of time it's timing. It's getting them at the right time. And that's where the overcoming objection comes in because so often even if it is the right time a candidate or a client may say uh we don't have any openings or i'm not i'm happy where i'm at right i love i'm happy where i'm at when i call a candidate i love that right because i know exactly what to say i didn't call you because i thought you were unhappy i called you if you weren't happy you'd have called me i called you because i have an opportunity that's better than one you're currently in right now that can put more money in your pocket blah, blah 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 right like i can overcome that objection relatively quickly to start a conversation it doesn't work every time no but it's getting comfortable doing that getting it so it's conversational right and you know rich and i were talking about the food network thing i look at people's linkedin profiles right while we're talking oh i can't talk to you you're in pittsburgh i'm a ravens fan you know you know I, I, why do i want to help a guy like that you know and they start laughing or i talk about rugby right i play rugby and lacrosse or skiing or surfing like if you can pull that out of a person rich talks about the um uh, the food network ernie talks to them in spanish if they're spanish anything to make a connection outside of i'm trying to sell you something or i'm trying to sell you a a, a job does that make sense what i'm saying Right, so the assumptive opening is good, but you also have to be conversational. You have to understand the tone that you're trying to to, to talk to the client with, right, and how to relate with them. Tom, to make it easier too. And I, I was, one one technique a, a friend's using right now is they're hit, hitting them with three calls in a row. So, <laughs> first call they ring, no answer. 
right away, they call again. That's the old telemarketer trick. Yeah. And then the third time they answer and they say, what the F do you want? <laughs> right or or you leave the message so that's not bad uh i'm not question. i'm not saying it's working tom but give it a try it, it, right i gotta tell you honestly it's an old telemarketer trick and it, it you know you do it once in a while but if you if you you know if you do that three or four times you will piss that person off that you called more often so than you're gonna just do it once i'm just telling you like there's nothing more annoying than interrupting a guy in a meeting with the super call yeah. like, he's just gonna be like go fuck yourself you know <laughs> to answer your question i changed, you need, my, I changed my name to ernie spam exactly <laughs> you need this, what have you found time between first attempt and second attempt and then leave a message right so it, it's more like how am i doing on my list i have a list of 100 people right i'm gonna go down my list and call all 100 people and then the ones that i didn't get the first time i'm gonna go back and call a sec so it could be <laughs> the same day it could be the next day, it could be two days later. It's just a matter of how I'm working my list, right? I don't put a specific time on it as much as I put, I want to attempt to call these hundred people. Yeah, that's I gave three, my first cool. attempt, second attempt, third attempt. But what yeah. you guys should do really, I mean, is, you know, before you even start making the phone calls, you send the emails out to everyone. And then your phone call is very simple. You just say, hey, listen, I'm just following up to an email. Even on your voicemail, you, I, I leave a voicemail the first call, the second call, the third call, I don't really care. More times to hear my name, the better. Um, and I'm going to send an email out, say Sunday night, call these people on Monday and just say, hey, following up on an email. Even I'll just leave that on the voicemail too. It's Rich Rosen, following so up on Rich, an email. Give Rich, me a call. Your, Rich, Rich, your sequence is email first. Mm -hmm. um, email, then, call, text, email, call, maybe text again too. You know, mm -hmm. I'll do it like Tom until I die. <laughs> Um, I mean, e automated email is so easy now. It's it's criminal that people aren't using it more. I, yeah. I like I said, I apologize to everybody because because yeah. I realized that I'm not a campaign guy. I'm not doing seven campaigns, but I see the value of what Rich is saying or the way that I did it. I did connection request, email, and then I was going to do a call, right? Yeah. So I wanted. You, know, you just got to remember the whole point of the email. Like my emails, half of them suck. Chappy GPT has made it much better, but you know, I've I've lost every sales training under the sun. And you'll drive yourself insane trying to get the perfect email, in my opinion, because everyone's got a different opinion. Tom and I uh, completely agree. The short to the point email is much better than the tome. It's what's your pain? Here's how I solved it for someone else. I can do it for you, essentially. They don't care that you're the best recruiter in the world. They don't care that you've done all these things. They just want to know, can you solve my problem? Are you going to take my pain away? Um, and why are you different than everyone else? Which you know, say is nearly impossible to get across in a short email, even in a series of emails. Sure. And again, Tom and as Tom said, a lot of this job is timing. But the more at bats you get, the better timing you got. Totally. You know. So I mean, the biggest I've said this on a podcast before too, but the biggest trick and the simplest thing to do in this whole business is set small goals and you just you keep your call, even if your calls suck, it doesn't matter. My calls aren't that great, quite frankly, but they work, you know, because you just keep doing it, you power through the bullshit. But you're, you know, when you're done with the day, you make that one extra call, and that one extra call gives like an extra month worth of calls for a year that your competitors aren't using. But whenever you think you're done, just do one more call. You yeah, know, good or bad. That is that is that is the core of what you know, why I'm successful, why Rich is sex and why I like it, because it's like, yeah, it's simple. We're not this is not rocket science guys come on right this yeah. is we're fucking headhunters right we're selling <laughs> candidates we're selling shit we don't own to people we're selling own dreams people. baby selling dreams <laughs> and so so you you know you're it's simple it's it, and, and let's roll into my keep it simple stupid email right so this is one that melanie in my office used and just knocked it out <clears> of the <throat> park right uh hold on a second go ahead max yeah, uh, just to say I'm having a problem with my webcam, so you can't see me, but I have it here. Um, I always put on my emails that I'll follow up with them, my phone, if I don't hear back from them. And they always get back to you. Yeah. Because if, if they if they don't reply and you call when you say you will, you're consistent. And if they do reply, then that starts a conversation. Yep. So it's yeah. quite a good thing. I always say at the end of my email, if I don't hear back from you, I'll follow up on Thursday. Yeah, and 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 if you're you're consistent and you're doing it, and again, like Rich said, with timing, it, it it's you know, what is it the 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 more the harder I work, the luckier I get. There's something or a plan, or whatever. Like yeah, you know, those who don't plan, those who fail to plan, fail to yeah. plan, and all that. Like they're all cliche, but that's what it comes down to, right? Rich, it works harder than anybody I know. 
right? Rich is at he's Sunday watching television with his wife sending emails, right? Mm -hmm. I'm drinking. <laughs> he's sending <laughs> emails, right? Like so, so that's what it comes down to. It's you know, is as much as we say, you know, is it hard work? It's not hard work, right? I've never worked a hard day in my life, but it's working, it's working the process, it's doing what you need to do to set that up, right? So he sends the email, then he makes the phone call, right? He, they already know who he is. They got an email. Or for me, I send a connection request, right? And then I send an email and then I call. Hey, I, you know, we connected on LinkedIn. I sent you the email. Are you interested? Right? Or whatever it is, right? It's it's just you have something to talk about, whether it's LinkedIn or the email, or whatever it is. And again, it doesn't work every time. But if you're doing this, you're going to get better at it. Your ability to overcome objections, your ability to small talk, your ability to deal with people <laughs> on the phone is going to get better and better the more that you do it. Yeah. That makes perfect. Yeah, the, the thing is, you can have your goals, but what I hear you guys saying is you got to have a system. If you don't have a system yeah. of how you're going about, you'll never accomplish your goals. But it's got to be pretty much habit every day. So you, you guys have a different way of – you guys have a, your own style of doing it. And as I always say about Rich, shit, he's always got to laugh. Every fucking time, mm -hmm. there's a laugh, there's a smile. And and that's that's just makes you feel like, hey, I want to talk to this dude. And uh and how you can incorporate that into your conversation. It and you gotta understand also that all the people we call, they're under a lot of stress all day long. So their decision is do I want to talk to this guy? Because he, at least he's gonna make me smile because everybody else in my day has like got me pissed <laughs> off. So, yeah. so that's that's the trick. But like to, for Ernie's saying, it's all it's all about being authentic, you know, is the big word of the year, it seems like. But it's it's really what it is. You know, you got to be, you know, super jazzed up about your client. You got to be super excited about the people you're working with. And if you're not, find better clients. You know, even in a shitty market, working on bad jobs is a complete waste of time. <laughs> so, Miguel, you had a comment? No, I just wanted to say that... Um that I, I, I took action on what Rick says on uh, Ben Mena podcast Thanks, to, um, to um, you know, take care of your prime time, you know, <clears throat> take care of your calls, uh, voicemails, um, SMS during business hours, and then do whatever whatever else you have to do after hours. And, and it's been again changing. I'm in the process of getting uh, two new job orders uh, due to the fact that, you know, if I, if I hit the ground at nine and leave at five, I'll try to make as much phone calls as I can. And, you know, it, it, it really works. And uh, with Tommy, um, I know him for a couple of years now, and, and uh, his MPC um, short, um, scripts works. Um, the, the, the shorter, the better. And, 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 and yeah, it, it's, it's, it's working. But Gail said, prime phone time, right? That's what, you know, we, call, we used to call it prime phone time, right? You know, nine to noon and then one to four, right? So, yeah, we don't make as much phone calls. We still make phone calls, but not nearly as much as we did back in the day because we didn't have email. But, you know, what you're do what are you doing then? Plan, you're not planning then, right? You're not researching then. You should be money making activities, you know, sending connection requests, you know, emails, phone calls. Even, even, even all that stuff, personally, to me, phone time is phone time. Yeah. You know, like you're during, you can send emails at night, you can send LinkedIn requests at night. Now it's all automated. I, I personally, have never understood what people do during the day if you're not on the phone. Because <laughs> if you're like you're if you're researching, you're nuts. If you're sending you know, like you know, one-offs here and there is one thing. But if you're doing a lot of research during the day, you're killing yourself. You'll never make a lot of money in this business. And if you're sending emails, again, yeah, you're gonna send emails here and there, schedule stuff, all those things. But if you're doing like work that you could be doing in front of the TV. I mean, if you got little kids, you know, they're going to bed early. If you got teenagers, they probably don't want to hang out with you anyway. So you got plenty of time to get stuff done. You know, I'm I, that can box that I sold, but then I also use Artemis had a big upgrade. They have a thing now where you can do a connection request and it's all, all everything's automated, man. It's just, I'm not doing the email thing as much as I am the connection request thing, but you just, at four o'clock, you send that, right? And then you come in the next morning and you're going to have what maybe 10 people accept your connection request, two mm -hmm. people message you about it. Now you got to you got to call this. You got 12 people that you can call. Yep. If they accepted you know, your connection request, right? And you if know. you use Navigator, it shows you all your most recent connections. If Canbox shows you all the most recent connections, and you can create a call list from that. 
right? And the and chances are, if they connected with you, you have all their contact info that's legit. You don't even need to scrape it. Did so, you know, upgrade they, with they, Canbox? I'm sorry. Did you upgrade with Canbox or did I just bought the? Yeah, I got the cheapy version. If you need help, it's really fucking difficult and hard to with. Uh, I'm more than happy to you know call me and I'll show you to use it. I just had to help Melanie. I had somebody else up somebody else. It's cheap, forty nine dollars. It does it, but it's there's it is not self explanatory. Like you, I had to trial and error for like a day to figure out how to do it. Is that Artemis? Is that Artemis you're talking about? No, no, Canbox. Can. Artemis is easy, uh, much spell, easier. Spell, hey, if you guys, go ahead. Sorry, spell Canbox or whatever. What about it? Spell it. K A N B O X. Have you guys tried uh, not to get on total tangent? But I saw this other one the other day. I just bought on AppSumo. Is Autobound? Have you seen this one? No. It it basically it's an e, e, you know AI email assistant. Or, you know, refresh your content, update your value prop. You know, generates content in bulk, things like that. Um, <laughs> add your but you could, but it'll create it towards your buyer persona. You fill in all the data and details. I haven't tried. I've just downloaded. It. I just started filling the whole thing out. Yeah, okay, so it's an AI that looks at the prospect and makes an email for it. Yeah, it's supposed to print. You know, personalize a lot of stuff. Personalize content for who you're going after. Well, uh, that's the use Artemis. They added an AI. You have to upgrade to get it, but it'll it'll make a connection request. Right, AI will write a connection request for every single connection request on the automation. Right, so all you you know you'll put what you kind of want it to say, and it'll write it specifically for each person. I haven't tried it; I don't trust it because I know it's going to come off super canned. Yeah, but all that stuff's there's, going to that. Yeah. There's another one that I tried that I'm trying out right now. That's actually really it, it does a pretty good job of it. Even makes little jokes and will say, "Hey, what's your favorite? You know, do you go to this pizza place? That's where I saw it. So it will go to like you'll mention a pizza place in Philly that if you're calling a guy in Philly, emailing a guy in Philly. It just do all through AI, and I'm trying Which to remember. That? Um, hang on, it is called. Uh, it's Was like still Harmony? in beta. In, uh, this one's AI. this one's still in beta. Hang on a second. Uh, is that an AppSumo? It's Sales Stack. Sales sure. Stack dot AI. I don't know if this one's in. A, these guys contacted me. I don't even know if they're in AppSumo yet. To be honest with you, they're okay. still in beta, but this one's pretty cool. There's another one called like um, that's similar, not as good. I don't think. Uh, that is called, what is this one called? It is called EV, EVY, AI, EVY AI does a lot of that similar stuff too. Um, this other one though, um, sales stack is pretty hot though. It looks pretty, it looks like it's going to be pretty good. Yeah, it does. You know, one of the, one of the thoughts was I heard somebody say, and I've probably said this here before is that if you're working with young, younger folks, they don't know how to make phone calls. I mean, you're telling somebody, here's a list of 50 phone calls in the old days. Here's a list and get on the phone. The younger people are so used to texting that, you know, even your kids text you, they don't call you. So you got to, you got to get them used to calling, which is a, a step that a lot of people don't understand. Tom, Fern. Excuse me real quickly. Uh, speaking of young, before I forget, uh, Ernie, you don't look a day over 49. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Ernie. Hey, oh, yeah. birthday, Happy pal. birthday, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy uh, birthday. Happy birthday. Yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> so, I want to I want to um, flip over to the kiss email. Right. So as I was before, uh, was trying to say is that um, Melanie did this right. And she knocked it out of the park. She got so many job orders now she's having problems filling them because they're hard to fill jobs. But this works really, really well. And um, basically is um, the, the, the subject, we, we go back and forth on subjects. Usually we'll put like company name, how are things that company name, right? We also will do um, industry, like, uh, like we're doing a search right now and it's design build project manager question mark, right? Or design build project question mark, right? It's a design build thing, right? It just, I don't get too caught up in the subjects, but I do want them to open it, right? Sometimes I'll put, hey, 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 first name, how are things at company, right? It's just, you know, depends on what we're doing. But anyway, for the for the business development side, we haven't met, but I'm reaching out because I just successfully wrapped up a search for a uh, IT guy at a similar company to current, your you know, the client's company. And I have a couple of candidates who I connected with or came in too late to the process, but they're really exceptional. Uh, both have five years of experience and their PEs, blah, 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 blah. Um, would you have an interest in knowing more about these candidates or discussing what skill set would be a better 
fit for your team. That's it. That's the whole email, right? And basically what you're saying is, uh, just like the assumptive opening, we just got done a search for Google and two candidates came late into the process, but they're exceptional and they have this experience, they're relocatable. And would you have an interest in knowing more about them? And you're going after companies that are that you want to make sure that you're going after companies that this is a candidate that they want. This is an opening that most companies like, hey, when she was doing it in geotechnical, she was getting geotechnical companies. Yes, 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 yes. We want to talk to them. Yes, yes. Oh, every single time. Right. And what you do, like, well, Tom, what if I don't have the candidates? Well, that's where the skill comes into call the client up, tell me what you're looking for. Oh, we need a geotechnical guy with his PE and five years experience. Oh, well, this guy only has his EIT or he only has three years experience or he won't relocate to that area. But what are you doing to fill that position? Well, we know how we you know, would you, are you willing to pay fees? Will you pay a recruiter? My, I pay a $3,000 engagement fee for us, right? That's where your sales skills come in to roll out of talking to the candidates because they're not qualified for his job and writing the job order. Does that make sense? Any questions on that one, on the keep it simple, stupid email? Because it, it, it sounds too good to be true, but Melanie has knocked it out of the frigging park with it. Every time she uses it, she gets job orders. Every it's, single time. It's basically just an MPC email, right? It's, yeah. It's not, you're not, but the MPC is, there's no real MPC. You're not saying I have a guy with seven years yeah. experience who has SAS and Finn and Python and front end this and back. It, it's just... Um, we got done doing a, a filled a search for a project manager and two guys came late into the process. They both have design build experience and they both have their PEs. That's all you're saying. Thank you. It's real simple. I mean, you can do, I've, lots of people do the MPC emails, but this is more of a blast to just send out to every single, let's say geotechnical engineering manager in the Northeast that you have a geotechnical engineer, right? You could do this with structural engineers. You could do this with, you know, front end developers, back end developers, you don't want to give too much information. That allure of, we just filled a search for your competitor and two guys came late into the process were exceptional is enough to get them to, in most cases, be willing to talk to you. Remember, we talk about the simplicity. Absolutely, that works, right? But 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 here, here, here's the challenge and, and not with what you're saying. The niche that, 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 that you're talking about, yes, I mean, and if you had those candidates, you would place those candidates in, in two or three of those places. I mean, it's it's a it's a job rich environment and a candidate short environment. That yeah. that method doesn't work near as well uh, in tech or or some of the traditional recruiting pieces. I'm not disputing it. I, I'm excited about our success around that. I'm excited about all those things, right? But I mean, it's yeah, all of us can send out some emails right now for civil engineers or structural engineer. Well, maybe less structural, but geotech. These people are dying for those things. They're all looking for the same person. Well, and that's uh, part of what I did this for, Jeff, is for the people who are like, I'm struggling in my niche. Look at look at look at your niche and see where your niche goes this way, right? Or this way, right? So in 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 my world, right, Melanie looked at civil engineering and then found geotechnical, right? It's close, but it's not the same, right? You know, you could go into and, and I don't know a lot about IT, <laughs> but maybe it's, you know. Uh, you you look two two levels over or two positions up or two positions down to try and find that sweet spot that may have a more difficult time finding people or that you have candidates because that was one of the things I tried to instill like on Jeff and, and Melanie is that I have lots of candidates that can cross over, right? Civil engineering guys have geotechnical experience, right? Civil engineering guys who are doing structural and do other things. So if you're working a niche where you look at your candidates and go, where can they add value besides you know, IT at a hotel, right? Can they add value at IT at a, a, a cruise ship because it's customers or something like that, right? So that's what I kind of like trying to instill also in this meeting is where can you take these and try and expand your niche out if you're not getting the clients that you want, you're not getting the searches you want, right? And, and then add to Jeff's point, do you have to be really careful on a candidate driven market? Right. Yes. We all every single one of us right now can send this email and all, every single one of us can get a geotechnical opening. Can you fill it? Maybe people are filling them, but it's uh, it's a long haul. Fees are big. Eh, 20,000, 25, 30,000. But it's tough. Right. Who wants to move to the middle of nowhere, West Virginia? And when you're doing that 
email, you know, you can do the A-B testing on the subject line too. See which one works better for you. You know, switch it up a little bit. But again, she sends this out to huge swaths of people who are hiring for those type of positions. She did it in this. She's doing it now in my side of the, of the world, but on the construction side. And we're hoping that we're going to open up some more in that area because construction is doing pretty well. Um, and, and I will let you know how that goes. I, she's putting that together now. So maybe we'll get some project manager, pre-construction managers, estimators, who knows. Um, any questions about the KISS email or, or, or look, I'm off, look, tear me down. Like I, I'm not perfect, right? Like I, I'm i just telling you what works for me. And Jeff brought up some good, good things. Craig, go ahead. Yeah, just real quick. This sounds to me like, I mean, you, any, like you just said, any of us could send this out right now, whether you actually have two people in your pipeline or not, but it's really more of a mop up campaign. My guess is it's like a, a short four to six weeks kind of campaign where you're reaching out to these folks. One day, man, one day. That's it. Well, with the follow up, we don't do, multi, I mean. we don't do multi levels on these, right? It's strictly like send this out, see what happens, move on to the next one, send them something maybe three months later, right? That's we we try not to get too caught up in the in the multi step campaigns because I, I it's a timing thing, as like Jeff was saying, and I'll get to you one second, Max. It, it's a timing thing because you want to get them when they have an opening, right? And, right? and yeah, I guess you could say, okay, what if they have one in four weeks? What if they have one in eight weeks? I don't know. I get really I pers my personal experience of why I don't do it is because I get frustrated with those emails when they get sent to me every four weeks. I get them all the time for people trying to sell me services and RPOs and whatever. So that's why I stay away from them. Now I know it works for other people, right? And I'm just giving you kind of like what works for me. And the people simple stupid email has always bo bore some type of fruit, whether it was for me or with for Melanie. Um, some other people have used it. It bears fruit just that one email and you can make a call list like as as rich rosen was saying there's nothing wrong with doing this and then going back and saying hey i sent you that email about those candidates did you get it I, I wanted to call and talk to you about it right that that would be my next step i wouldn't do another email i would absolutely add a call if i sent that out and really wanted to do business with say 80 of those companies i would call every single one of those 80 companies and get that hiring manager on the phone and say, hey, this is Tom Alashio. I don't know if you saw my email about the search we did for XYZ Corporation and the two project managers. Oh, you did? Okay, do you have an opening or you're interested in talking? You know, and right, because you got something to talk about now. You're not right. just saying, hey, I'm a head owner, I'm wonderful and great, or whatever it is. So I would add, like, you know, in Loxo, you can do this and have have all that added to a call queue for you. So when you come in the next day, your call queue is up and ready, right? right? So that is the kind of thing that we would do because we're not big on the multi-step campaigns. I've never had, I've done multi-step campaigns a couple of times and not had any luck with them whatsoever. You know, I think the biggest difference that, that I've seen in my business is I used to, on that first call, whether I'd emailed or text or whatever, I'd always leave a message. That's, that I found was, was really outdated. You run, like you said, Tom, you run through your, your entire list because you're just looking for the people who pick up that phone at the very first and then you follow up with another email don't i mean um uh phone attempt don't leave me uh, a message then you do the third or fourth time whatever but i have found it, it it's a real i hate to use the word game changer but running through that list as quick as possible just see who's going to pick up that phone so you don't leave a message you don't know the third attempt not until uh -huh. a third attempt and then you know, just a little bit of a, 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 a subtle change. That third attempt, leave a message, and then maybe a campaign after that, a real short one. But I, I agree with you, Thomas. These long email campaigns, I'm sure there's somebody who has mastered that. But yeah, that there are people that you know, have that a long way. Before you get away from that, I was just going to add a little technical part here. Make sure your phone has your name on it. Sometimes, oh, yeah. sometimes if your if your wife or your spouse is, is, has has their uh, they're paying the bill, and the phone's in their name or her name, it is it'll have their name on it. Well, you know that brings up a good question. Those, if hey, we Steve, real quick, can I, Matt, Max wanted to say something. I wanted to get okay. him first. Good, Max. Yeah, uh, it's, it's quick. My question would be kind of when would you do a kiss email versus an NPC email? I guess if the NPC you had a strong NPC, you go with a 
a detailed yeah. NPC, and if not, you'd give her a kiss. And NPC email, I need to have a rock star, right? Yeah. And honestly, if I have a rock star in my industry, like I have a guy with seven years experience, he's got his PE, he's got you know all the bells and whistles that I know my clients will jump up and down about. That's I'm not emailing, I'm calling, yeah. right? Because I know I can place this guy. I, after four calls, I probably have three send outs, right? So yeah. to me, a good MPC, right, is I would much rather get on the phone and say, hey, I got the guy. He's looking, he's willing to relocate. And if you want him, you have to act now because if you don't want him, I'm calling. You know who I'm calling, Bill. You know who I'm calling next, right? That's the MPC. If I have a real MPC, right? We kid ourselves often and think, oh, that guy's kind of an MPC. No. Like you really have to say to yourself, is this somebody that someone's going to pay twenty or thirty oh, thousand? The shit I'm selling is awesome. You gotta what? try it. The shit I'm selling is awesome. You gotta <laughs> try it. You gotta try it. Uh, Ernie, go ahead. Yeah, but the, there was a comment too by Ben Ling on one of the posts, and he's you never see Ben Ling, but this guy has. If you find his name out there, listen to what he has to say because the guy's good. But what he talked about was when you do a submittal. That should also be somebody you send out as an NPC to other people. If you're not working in engaged search where you've guaranteed they have right of first refusal. If you're not, but most, if you're doing contingency, you're thinking about, you know, that's, you think it's outside the box. And, and so many of us will send one person because we're working on it and we'll think we have to be loyal to that person or that, that client, but understanding that that client may have 20 other recruiters looking for that same job. So, you know, I agree with that 100%. If you have a great candidate you've sent out to a client and he's willing to interview elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Do an MPC campaign with him. Why not? What do you have to lose? Right? Nothing. And if your client doesn't hire him, at least you got a backup. We use yes, so maybe power three, three candidates uh, interviewing three different companies and, you know, three different, I remember it was, but that's basically nine, nine send outs, right? If you could send out, Three guys or the three different jobs with three different companies, that's nine send outs. That's a guaranteed placement in my book. Absolutely. Right? So look at it like that. If you have an opening with Google, IBM, and US Steel for a CFO, and you have three candidates, make sure all three candidates are interviewing with all three companies, right? Does that make sense? That's nine send outs, nine first time send outs if you do that. If I'm doing my math right. And then if that, that and, and a 10 to one, we call it a 10 to one placement ratio. When you're new and you're young, your first time send out the placement ratio is usually 10 to one. So you do that, you're going to make up your chances are you're very good chance you'll make a placement. Yes, Max. And also with Loxa, you can, you could set it up. So you have like a NPC form in a way that the candidate could fill out or whatever. And so every time you uh, have a, a short list of three candidates, automatically you've got the NPC thing built for the other two. If you send them great because it might be the case that the client hires two but if you have a short list of three you've got two people that are good enough to be sent out you might as well have that automatically set up so you can quickly mpc them um you know as part tom, of your team tom Byrne has a it's not really an mpc but he's got a a a uh, setup in loxo in his campaign right and you all can do this i don't care what applicant traffic system you're using if you have a campaign feature you have a, a campaign set up right that you can just yeah. drop people into Anytime, yeah. right? If they're if they're if they get like he does one for promotions. If someone gets promoted, he drops them in there and they get this customized email that says, Congratulations, you're a promotion. Can I help you fill any searches? Right. Basically, <laughs> that's the long and short of it. Right. So you can set up these campaigns in your system that are constantly running with the steps in them that just you just if you get a candidate or get a client, whatever it is, and just drop them right in there. Yeah. And boom, you don't have to think about it. And there is a, speaking of the devil, there he is. <laughs> Who? Tom. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, I want to move on to the next one. So is everybody under, you know, any questions? Do you want me to go? Because this is going to take up some time. The next thing we're going to do the, the ambulance chasing. Does anybody want me to call any object, overcome objections on an MPC call, uh, clarify anything on the keep it simple, stupid email or the um, assumptive opening? Anything there? Okay. So um, I don't use LinkedIn recruiter or recruiter light. LinkedIn sales navigator, in my opinion, is better, fight me. And it's cheaper. And it has some filters that I don't, and again, I haven't used recruiter for a long time, 
uh, that I didn't have available to me in um, LinkedIn Recruiter, right? Some really cool things. So what we figured out, um, often recruiters will say, ah, I go into, I go into Monster and, and Dice and CareerBuild and I look for openings and you call the employer. Well, in my opinion, that's what every recruiter is doing. Plus they're getting tons of applications depending on the market, right? And you're just caught up in that same thing. Right. That's what everybody's trying to do. Oh, I can I, you know, I can download all these jobs and I'll send candidates to it. Like, OK, fine. That may work for some people. I, I tend to feel like you're caught in this group of hundreds of people doing that and not as productive. Right. So when we figured out kind of the ambulance chasing thing, it's 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 got some actually has some flaws. Right. But it allows you like the assumptive opening and the other ones to to really show off who you are. And how much you know about your industry and this is basically what you do right so this is sales navigator and i'm gonna let you guys call this out right You're, you know if, if you don't mind sharing your industry or whatever right so we're gonna come down here and we're gonna go okay years at the current company less than a year and the reason we're doing that we're trying to get rid of promotions what we're looking for is we're gonna come over here to change jobs and the on in sales navigator change jobs means within the last uh, 90 days right that's what that filter is it's not anybody who's changed jobs in the last two years it's last 90 days right so now we have people less than one year change jobs in 90 days over 5 million people have changed jobs that means that they left someplace that now has a vacancy and that's where the ambulance chasing comes in right so we look at Larry Tate for a second. Larry got promoted because he's been at the company seven months, but Jerry did not. Jerry was two months in the role, two months at the company. So if we click on Jerry, where was he prior? He was a commercial title examiner at Bespoke Title Holdings. So my call is to whoever the head of commercial title examiners is at Bespoke Holdings and say, hey, my name's Tom Alaccio. I'm a headhunter. I specialize in real, real estate, whatever this guy does. I heard Jerry left you guys and you guys are in the need for a commercial title examiner. Did you fill that position yet? Oh my God. How do you know Jerry left? Well, I heard he went to go work for Fathom Realty, which boggles the mind because Bespoke is a much better company. And, you know, it's crazy that he went there. You know, what happened? And all of a sudden now, not only is this like the assumptive opening, look how good I am, but look how good I am. And I know who the guy is that left and the company he went to go work for. Right. You were you may provide information that they don't know. They may not know that he left and went there. Maybe they don't check LinkedIn as much. Right. Right. You you, you are like now here's the problem to do. This requires some work. This is the after hours or your VA. Right. Once you decide how you're going to filter this. Right. And so if we're going to filter this and I know some of uh, people who are here that. Um, I oh, Expand this. What are you doing now? I got to do that, and then I got to come here, right? So let's say we're going to do an industry, right? So let's do. Um, somebody want to throw an industry out? Hell, let's go construction, Thomas. For okay. ten. So let's do construction. So right here. So right now we got 120 thousand people, right? Change jobs in construction in the last 90 days. And then we're gonna we're gonna have to do um, geography, probably a region or a yeah. town or a state. Okay, the United States for now to see how many we get, right? And then like, okay, so I work um, project managers, estimators, superintendents, right? So let's say I I, um, I have a decent superintendent that maybe I want to do an MPC thing on. He's not great, but he's worth. So I'm gonna come over here and do current job title, superintendent. I got 508 people who left their roles in the last 90 days who are superintendents, right? So look at Alexander Dominguez, right? He was a Glazier at J.R. Butler. Now, it, that's probably not a good fit, but he did go to Glazier Nation from J.R. Butler. That's a glass and glazing company. So I'm not going to do a Glazier because that's labor. But for someone who does labor, that's a good lead, right? Uh, Paul Enriquez, Lazy Dog Restaurant and Bar, he left. He was a construction superintendent, Empire Construction, for two years and a month. That is an opening. That is a, they lost a superintendent. I am calling the top manager, 
whoever at Empire Construction and saying, hey, I uh, heard you guys just lost a, you know, a superintendent. I can't believe Paul went to go work for a restaurant group. You know, he's got to be bored out of his mind building the same buildings. And that guy's been like, oh, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, he did. Yeah, we, we're, we're dying. We need somebody. Right. That imagine having a hundred calls like that where you can say, hey, how are things going since Paul left, since Perry left, since Robert left, since Josh left? You know, now the, the thing is, the difficulty of this is who's going to compile this list for you. That, that's, the, that's the one we haven't figured out yet. Now, I got a call from Neil Lobitz at Back Office Staffing Solution that says Z the Zapier can help me do this in a much easier way. And maybe they can. I don't know. But what you what there was another thing you can do is put it in previous um, title. But that unfortunately, it doesn't give you the most the, the, the last title. It gives you any time they were a superintendent or any time they were an engineer. Right. That's why I do the current one. Uh, go ahead, Tom. Uh, yeah, if you haven't thought about it, Tom, once you get done building this all out, make sure you save it. Do save search to get alerts notified. Yeah, yeah. this so way. Right here, what he's talking about is I can save this search, right? So now, anytime anyone switches jobs, who's a superintendent and has been in a company less than a year in the construction industry, I'm going to get an email every day. You know, Tom, I know it's only a half step here of an improvement, but what you can do is when you've compiled that list and it's on, I mean, you you can, you can take Alexander Dominguez all the way down that entire um, cut and paste it into either chat GPT or Bard or whatever and just say, <clears throat> just give me the name. Take out all take out all the extraneous stuff. And like I said, I know it's only a half step, and I'm interested to see what I don't know you, what you mean. Can you please expand on that, Steve? If you if if you um control uh control A or control yeah, control A that entire page, save it, control C, go over to chat GPT. You can explain to chat BG, chat GPT that all you want is alexander dominguez paul enriquez perry gibbs and you can even you can even say all i want is their name and the title of the company uh matt i don't know the answer to that question but i kind of understand what steve's saying is there a way that i could put this in and say can you please give me the name of the company and the previous position of every single one of these people yeah yeah they can, that, can that that actually might if you could figure that out that would be the thing now, Matt, what 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 was it you were saying you could use? Oh yeah. So there's a tool called Clay, and it scrapes stuff like this quick. Um, it, you could pay for it and you know, enrich data for you and all that. But the free version, if you get the extension, and you have a list like this, you can it, basically it pulls it up, and you just have to go 25 by 25. You just have to scroll up and down like just scroll down next page scroll down next page scroll down next page and it'll compile a a list there may be limitations on exporting for the free version mm -hmm. uh, but i believe you can so the the tool's called clay is it app.clay.com and let me just pull it up real quick because i don't want to mislead you know and get you some malware sh you know shit on your stuff it looks like a little um colorful sideways rainbow <clears> that the C if you sign yeah. up for that and then get their extension yeah it's clay.com yeah clay.com there you go C-L-A-Y yeah I was so, just checking that out the other day yeah yeah so I've used it a little bit to scrape like job leads on LinkedIn and other people but this is a good way to use it too to pull all these people that have left and it'll it'll bring the company name and his their name well bring you, the previous company name and the previous title i don't think so so there's that, a challenge that's, that's yeah. the that's the challenge that we're running into is and also and uh, is, is finding like a way to quickly grab i want the previous company and previous title of every yeah. single one of these people that because that's what you're that's what you're doing you're calling the previous company Yep. You're not calling the new company. You're calling the previous company. You're like, well, hey, the, the yeah. paid version. You can you can do it all. Oh, okay. But not the free. Yeah. So pricing. Yeah. What is it? 
money. It's expensive. $149 it's, it's a month expensive. is not. Bye. I love you. Bye. Yeah, that's not. And I guess they're getting it because of the credits. Um, yeah, like all the enriched data. You yeah. can do a lot with this tool, like a, a shit ton of stuff, but um, it gets complex. So with yeah. um with linked helper you could certainly get the last company you could save all the results to a um to a, a navigator list and then you can export it as a csv with they would call it organization two so organization one is their current company and organization two is their previous company i don't think you could get the previous job title but you could certainly get the previous company and then their and, and like which their which which tool is that linked helper two Linked helper. Okay. Thank you kindly. You're welcome. I looked at linked helper. Uh, it's, it, it, for, and a lot of people swear by it. It's really good. Uh, it's really good. I mean, the, it's difficult. Oh in my the God. Econ- 15 bucks yeah. a month. It's, it's, it's so cheap. Like, it's, it couldn't be cheaper. And, and I've never had cool, any cool, problems. Cool last, um, previous company. Oh, yeah. You can. Integration too. Basically, what you would do is you would um, save all of your, you scrape all of your results, and then you would save them to a sales navigator list, and then export the list basically with with. Ooh, uh, I just thought of something. Look at this. This is Sales QL, right? Oh no, let me let me grab one of these. This is Sales QL. They actually, when they scrape it, they do give you the previous company. Yeah. Right. So you could, when you go to parse this into Loxo, right? Actually, yeah, you I think you might want to something, big boy. You could put in the previous position and previous company. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's all you need. And do it like that. And when you do it in the Loxo or wherever applicant tracking system you're using, you could do it as a company, not as a contact, and it would create a company record for you. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? That actually is not a bad idea. That's a good idea because I I, I always just disregard. yeah. When you go into the, not to get on a Loxo tangent, right? When you go into Loxo and you uh, want to import a CSV, oops. Um, you come down here. And you can put it as a contact. When you put it as a contact, it'll automatically make a record inside of the company section with that company name. You know, I think you could do that into, into to your entire database by just um... yeah. You could switch if you if you took your entire database and did a bulk change of every candidate into a contact, and we create companies. But I, I don't want that many companies in Loxo. Um, oh, really? Does anybody have some questions that they or do you want, want me to do a couple for your industries? Anybody want me to do anything on this? Right? Anybody? I, I have no problem, you know, running a couple searches so you can see it differently in areas like in Texas, wherever it is. So now this is all self reported, right? What is if somebody shows up as making a job change, they will have had to have correct. Okay. Yeah. 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 We. Yeah. Yeah. So chances part, are that Joshua out. Smith. He may have switched companies five months ago. Yes. Right. Yeah. But or he could have updated it today, but put that he started at the ruin company in January. Yeah. But some of these people wait a long time to make yeah. sure that they they're right, going to stay. Right. I mean, this is a good one right here. Regency Construction Services. Two and a half years in Cleveland. Lost this guy. Right. They're a twenty million, ten to twenty million dollar. General contractor with 50 to 200 employees. They lost a superintendent in the last two months, right? If we change this to um, project manager, what do we get? Or pre yeah, let's see, project manager. And you can do, I mean, and the thing is, you can do this for foremen and CEOs. For Tom, to, to Tom's uh, thing, Tom does his uh, congratulations. You could do this with CEOs, right? And now you just pull the guy, the first guys, right? The guy, like if you put in, if we put in CEO here, right? These 134 people, see you, Matt. These 134 people just got promoted. Here's a, here's 134 people you can crack and congratulate and sell your services to. And also call their previous company, right? Because these are hiring managers, right? The, the superintendents don't hire anybody. Well, 
they hire foreman, but you know, like you, so you could say, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to congratulate all these people. And then I'm going to look at Dave Dickey and say, okay, where did he come from? He was at, Dickey Strategic Consulting. So he was out of work, right? So we're not going to call that one, right? Uh, let's see, this guy, he's at Simpson now. He was at ARCE Consulting, right? So maybe you call ARC. Hey, you guys lost your CEO. How do I help? Or congratulations on going to work at Simpson Strong Tie. You know? Anyway, there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat with this, right? If we put in um, project manager, right? we get 2000 in the US way better than the superintendent one 2000 project managers in the construction industry that's going to be prime and and subcontractors right cuz tom foxwell is a you know he's at a door company right but he was a he was at union wholesalers for two and a half 13 you know 3 years almost take it take it down a notch and put supervisor Thirty-one. Yeah, but you also had uh, on the very top there. I think you've got a, a name of a company. No, that's just a plus. Asking you. Oh, okay, okay. Put that in. Okay. Um, let's do this. So you can do keywords too, right? So let's do um, current job title, um, plant manager, and we can do Paul. 587 people who recently changed jobs that have the word that were, what did we say? So they were, oh, did I not put in plant manager? Sorry. Oh, there's only one. Well, just put in manager, see what it says. 352. Yeah. United States, one year. That's interesting. So, um, in the whole realm of things, plant managers probably not as a hot commodity right now, right? But, yeah, but using using that same format, just put in manager instead of plant manager. One hundred and thirty. But you're going to get plant. You're going to get project. You're going to get business development, yeah, energy. Yeah, but the truth is sometimes a plant manager in one place could be called an operations manager in another place and could be called something else, site manager in a third place. Let's do packaging and containers. 359 in packaging. Let's do um, glass, ceramics, and concrete. 70. IT and IT consulting. 8,000, right? <laughs> so you IT guys that are out there, how do we, how do we, how do we make this more manageable? Oh. Front end. Thirty-five. Um, what about by state? Yeah, you have to do it by region or title. Like you could do DevOps or I don't do tech anymore, but I used to. Develop DevOps. Yeah. OPS. There we go. A thousand. Right. But change jobs less than one year. Why is that guy coming up? That's weird. Four years. That's weird. Two months, three months, one month. Two months, right? Is this now the issue? I don't know. It is this? Is this something that you it guys would want? Right? If it was in your industry, like I, I you know, that's the thing. There's a lot of different ways you can bring this down because you could do a function, right? So you can do function. Are they in engineering, information technology, customer service, and sales, right? So if you wanted to place it sales guys, these are all they have all the sales titles, right? And then you could do seniority level if you wanted to find. Um, 
entry level people, probably not, but let's say um, senior, right? So are these going to be global account manager, part partner account executive, business development consultant, and then maybe you want to work in um, hotel. There's 50 guys who are they had the word hotel somewhere in their thing that are selling these services. Right. So there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat. I'm, I just know it from my industry. Right. So I, the way that I would do it is very differently than the way some of you can do it. But there's you can do it by function, seniority level. You can do it by industry. You can do it by years of experience. It, there's so many different ways. But the two the most important key things to remember is is change jobs and less than one year. Those are the two most important things that you're going to get because what you're looking for is their previous company, right? That's who you're calling. If, if, you're, if Paul Rosner is a guy, we want to talk to, um, well, not him, right? Because he's been a freelancer. Scott, we want to talk to, he was the chief information officer at SNS Enterprises. So you want to talk to whoever at SNS Enterprises that would hire the chief information officer. That's that's how my brain runs this ambulance chasing thing. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, it's great stuff. Okay. Um, I wanted to show this kind of off point. Does everybody know what this is? Anybody? It's called. I, um, I did. I did. You showed me, right? Yeah, you so, showed me too. <laughs> if, if none of you guys know, this is Dean DeCasa's start.me page. And it has all times of great in industry information, right? He's got search tools, contact finding, every single one of them, the Chrome extensions, right? That's how I stumbled on this, right? And when I, I made my own. And when I made my own, I copied stuff from his plus put my, my own in. So for me, I have all my chat GPT stuff here. I have my AI prompts here. I have my flow. My flow is my, how I work, right? So it's got my Boxo, it's got my email, it's got Teams, it's got my notes. Sales Navigator, my invoice system, LinkedIn, et cetera, right? And then my outreach, LinkedIn automation, um, copy of the social sites. I pulled that from Dean's side, right? Boolean X-ray that I use, training, maps, right? And then I had another page. A lot of this I pulled from Dean. I, I, I saw stuff that Dean had, right? And I went to Dean's page and, I, and all I did is click right here and said, add to my page, right? So you can go through... His, all his different pages. Dean's got this page five. Yeah, and five. like Dean's gold, right? And you can conventions, webcams, documents, right? And you just click right here and uh, add to my page. That's it. It's really, really easy to 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 put these things together. And I'll share my page with you guys too. If, if to pull stuff off, if you want, I got no problem doing that. But, you know, you pull from him. And these are the ones I got. I got Dean's gold, right? The stuff that I may use in the, in the future because he's got data scrapers, right? He's got address search, username lookup. If you knew somebody's username but can't find who they are, you can do that. And then my work page. And this is yeah, free. 100% free. Send me your work page, Thomas, if you yeah. would. Mm -hmm. it, is that a URL or is that actually a, uh, a Google Chrome extension? No, so this is at the URL is start.me. Yeah. And hold on, let me, how do I say? Um, Share page, I think, is what you're looking for. Oh, there we go. Share my link, public link, copy. And then here you go, guys. Yeah, so start.me is where you get started to sign up, right? If you just go to start.me, this is what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, it won't take me there because um there you go. So start for free. That's it. And you get three, you get um the free version of it is three pages and seven columns, I think, or six columns. And um, Dean's, if you all want Dean's here, I'll, say, I'll share Dean's. I, I, put, I, I put his uh, his, his uh, link on the chat there. 
Yeah. Here's the start me page too. I did, yeah, and he his search authority you already put in, but his that's his page and my page. Shelly Stuckrow has a pretty good one too, and I'll put that in the chat. Oh right. yeah, that would be great. I, I I'm always looking for new tools, right? So and adding to it. But you know, I like whenever and, and if I close out all my windows, this is what pops up first. Whenever I open a new tab, this is what pops up first. Right. So I never forget. I always know you know, I used to have everything up here. That was Ernie's deal, right? But now I have it right where I can see it. Everything that's on here is here. So I can see it and real quick, go to it. And the, and the cool thing is, if I click on Locks of Jobs, this still stays here. It opens up in a new tab. All the more reason to have multiple uh, monitors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, that's my presentation on how I, how I how I build business, right? That Those are the four techniques that we use, I use to get new clients to, if I was going to start a new niche, whatever it is, those are the four things we do. And to piggyback on what Rich was saying, hey, man, you got to be making phone calls. And Tom, I know, like, you know, hey, you, it takes a long time for you to get a hold of people. But I always say this. If I call a company, I don't, I, I say, hey, can I talk to Tom Byrne, please? Uh, okay, they transfer me and I get his voicemail. I hit zero. I'm sorry. I got his voicemail. Is he in the office? Yes, but he's on the phone. Okay, I'll hold for a moment. And I may hold for 30 seconds, right? Because I want to get the guy on the phone. She comes back on. Ellie's still on the phone. Okay, do you know when he's going to be up? I want to make, I left him a voicemail. I want to make sure I get a hold of him. Or, no, he's not in the office. Oh, do you have a cell phone number? Don't, sometimes they'll just give you a cell phone number, right? If they don't give it to you, you call back the next day, disguise your voice a little bit, said, hey, uh, is Tom in the office? No, I'm sorry. He's not. He's, oh, man, I, I, I'm hoping you can help me. I had the worst day. Hey, what's wrong? I, I was fishing yesterday, dropped my cell phone in the water. I lost all my contacts, all everything, and I was supposed to call Tom today, and I cannot find his cell phone number. Can you give it to me? Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. I have never, ever been turned down using that stupid ruse. Never. They always give me the cell phone number because they empathize with you. Now, some may say with well, iCloud and all that, it's not as hard to, you know, but still, everybody's lost their cell phone. Everybody's dumped, you know, accidentally dumped it in the water. You say that to secretary 99.9% .9 of the time. They just give you, they say, who is this? Oh, it's Tom Alashio with RLI Construction. Oh, okay. And they'll give you the phone number. If you have the confidence to say that and just come out and be like, I man, I, I feel like an idiot. I dropped my cell phone. I lost everything. And I got to call Tom today and I cannot find his cell phone number. I, I could not do that because that would be lying. <laughs> <laughs> you're married. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> yeah, if you're married, you can do this. <laughs> so that's a that's a good that's a good way to get cell phone numbers, right? If you can't get it any other way, right? It works great on Mondays because you can say you did it over the weekend, but it still works on Thursdays too because you did it yesterday. Um, but that, like I always tell people, hit zero, have them paged, right? They have a paging system. Uh, I know he's not in his office. Can you page him for me? Tell him Tom Alashi is on the phone. Okay. <laughs> what are they going to do, right? Forget it. You know, no one's going to come and beat you up. No one's going to jump through the phone and beat you up, right? You were in a position of power. When he goes, who is this? Hey, it's Tom Alessio. You. you have me paged? Yeah, I'm a head owner. I got this great opportunity or I got this great candidate. I can't believe you have me paged. I can't believe you don't want to talk to my candidate, right? Like, you know, it's that confidence, right? What, and, and again, is that guy going to remember you? Hell yeah. You had him fucking paged. He went to the bathroom. So don't be afraid to hit zero. To have people page, to ask for the cell phone number, to call the secretary to pain in the ass, I call before nine, I call after five, I call at lunchtime, or I'll get two other people to call at the exact same time because she can't answer three phones. I'll also have someone say, uh, if they say, oh, you know, I can't get through, hey, okay, I'll call back and get transferred to someone I know. Send me to accounts payable, please. I'll call, hey, accounts payable, please. I get accounts. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm. She meant to transfer me to Tom Byrne. Can you, can you send me to Tom, right? She may send you back to the operator or she may send you to Tom, right? Or if you get into a directory, if you get a voicemail, hit pound, hit star. See if you can get through the directory, find out the guy's extension, right? Now you have Tom Burns extension, you call him at six o'clock. When, when an automated attendant comes on and you go, bup, 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 bup. or that lady who won't get you through, extension 107, please. You're not even asking for the person. You're asking for the extension. How did you know it was Tom's extension? She may put you right through at that point. Those are the ways. Like, everybody, I can't get, there are so many different ways to do this. I, I love telling this story. I had an opening in Pittsburgh 
for a shredder manager, right? We're looking for a guy who can run a shredder that shreds metal. But it just doesn't shred metal. These shredders are so big, you can put a full-size tour bus in it, and it will shred it down to nothing, right? So these guys are blue-collar, hard to find because they're sitting in a fucking shredder, right? And there's not a lot of them. So I, I, play, I made the placement. I got a $24,000 fee. I called the guy's tattoo parlor and left a message for him. He had his tattoo parlor on his Facebook. I had lots of tattoos. We left a message at the tattoo parlor. He called me back. I recruited him. They hired him. End of story, right? Like, there, you can get a hold of people. You can get a hold of them. It's just what are you willing to do to get a hold of them? How far are you willing to go? What fake name? What bullshit story are you going to say to get the person on the phone? Right? I, there, there, I, there. There is no depth to my shallowness, right? I will do fucking anything to get that person on the phone. So do you work on weekends? Pardon me? Do you work on weekends? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Ernie. Yeah, nice I, nice I, 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 I on weekends. I closed, I closed the deal Sunday, right? The guy called me. I, I, I signed the offer letter. I know you're probably watching the football. We talked real quick. He had some questions. Yeah, if I have to, of course, I'll work on weekends. Right? If I have lots of searches and I've got to send out connection press, of course I will. Don't want to, right? But I will, right? I will do, you know, there's there's so many ways to get a hold of people. And we, old guys like me, forget. We didn't have uh, LinkedIn scrapers. We didn't have LinkedIn. We didn't have, we had a fucking fax machine, right? And we all shared a one phone extension that, like, when I came back from lunch, I'd hit and have all these messages, right? And I'd have to write them on a little piece of paper and hand it out to the other recruiters, right? If you were the first one to get there and get all the messages, right? So we had to do all that before to get a hold of these people. So all these tricks still work, but are you willing to do that? Are you willing to have that guy pays? Are you willing to say, I lost my cell phone. Can you give me a cell phone number? Are you willing to call after hours? Are you willing to call them at home, right? Are you willing to drive the secretary so insane she doesn't answer the phone anymore so you're able to get to the directory? You know, one of the, one of the things too is that when people say they're a recruiter, you're not really a recruiter. You're really an entrepreneur and you're hustling all the time. Yeah. And that and that's got to be your attitude, because uh, to me, if you give yourself a title like that, you're, you're it limits you. But if you're running your own business, you just think of all the people out in the world that have their bakery shops, they have their donut shops, they have this shop, that shop. Those guys are up at four. They're they're working till ten o'clock at night. They're you know they're just doing it. My uncle owned the biggest produce company in Maryland. He got up every day at eleven thirty p.m. To make sure he was at Jessup by 1 a.m. to buy the fruit that came in off the trucks. Right? I, I look, and I could have stayed in produce, but that, I said to my, I don't care how much money you pay me. I'm not getting, I'm not getting up at 1 o'clock in the morning and going to work. Right? So that guy worked harder than I ever worked. And yeah. that's, you know, not go off on tangents, but, man, we've been doing this job a lot. Tom, you've been doing this a long time. We've all been doing this a long time. We know the tricks. Just we, we got to have the, you know, are you going to do them? Are you going to do them? Are you going to call up and say, hi, can I talk to uh, Corey, please? Oh, I'm sorry. We don't have a Corey. Oh, I'm sorry. I must have got his name wrong. He's a young engineer. works for you guys. Uh, heavy set, thin guy, sandy brown hair. Um, just got his EIT. Oh, we got Steve, Cindy, Joe. No, no, no. You sure. Is there anybody else? Well, we got a guy with his PE. That's Joe. Okay, thanks. Boom. You got four names, right? Now I got, I got three EITs and a PE. I call back the next day. Can I talk to Joe? Hey, I'm a headhunter. You want to make a job change? No. Okay, click. Right? right? That's what we did. I did that 57 times through the state of Alabama in 2001 and made like four or five placements and put a company out of business because I took their chief engineer and the two other engineers. Right? Like, I, and we didn't have scrapers. We didn't have LinkedIn. I just used a, the, the, the phone book and called the structural engineering firms and said, hi, can I talk to Corey? 57 times. The reason I know it's 57 because only 50 companies would fit on a management recruiter's planner. And I had to write the other seven around the corners like this so I could get all 57 of them. So we can do it, but we're, we are lazy now. We are, we are coddled with campaigns and LinkedIn and message requests and, and emails and virtual assistants, right? I didn't have any Easy shit. button. Right? So you can get a hold of them. You can get them on the phone. You can get them on the phone. I know IT's harder. They don't want to answer, but it hit zero. Have them paged. 
Leave a message. Leave another message. Leave another message. Leave another message. They're, stop fucking calling me. Well, call me back. And I'll stop calling you. <laughs> right? I have a, I, I, my one time that I did one of those multi-level campaigns, right? I had like three or four emails. The third email had, please choose the reason why you won't return my email or call me. And it was like, I, you know, I think you're annoying. I wish you would go away. I've been busy, but I'm very interested, you know, and it, you click the link and there was one of them was go pound sand and they would fill it out and I would get it into Loxo that say, go pound sand. Do not call me ever again. Take your name off my list. Like five people did that. But a lot of people laughed at it, called me back because I was real. I was like, man, why don't you call me? Here are the reasons why. Right. Now, one of them was like, uh, you, I've been abducted by aliens and I just got back. Right. I put that in the email and people thought that was funny because it was different, right? I, I sent that as a fax back in the day. If I didn't get a call back from a client, I had a little fax that I would send out to them that would say that, please check the reason why you haven't called me back. I, you know, you're annoying. I wish you would go away. I'm interested, but I'm really busy and haven't had a chance to give you a call back. I was arrested and there was another one. And it got a call back every single time, every single time. I think what you're saying is true, Tom. And the more calls you make, the more they, even if they don't, return those calls the more they understand wait a minute this person might be you'll send seven fucking emails but you won't make seven phone calls right you'll send seven emails over three weeks with all this like you know cadence and the email and look call the guy seven times <laughs> yeah no I, I i think i think these particularly clients they have to understand that somebody who's who's willing to call them many many times <laughs> is also willing to call their best people many many times i'm sure that a lot of you guys are just like me we've been in this business a long time sometimes we can get a little bit uppity in regards to <laughs> what we can do i'm an asshole i admit it you don't say uppity you say i'm an asshole <laughs> yeah i mean i i i think the, the tacit the tacit understanding that they need to have is listen i'm i'm willing to call you and call you and call you you don't call me back i don't forget you pete lefkowitz i remember all your people say that you say imagine how tenacious i am trying to get a hold of you imagine what i'll do trying to help you fill your positions absolutely that's a steve Lef lefkowitz thing right absolutely like, like, like Absolutely. Look what I'm doing. I look what I'm doing trying to get your business. Imagine what I'll do to help you fill those positions. <laughs> there, there's a I, I, I've called people at 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And then I tell them, Oh, I, I'm sorry, it's 10 o'clock. I didn't I just looked up. I, I got so excited seeing your background. Wanted to talk to you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can we set up a time to talk later or tomorrow? Or do you want to talk now? You go, why don't we just talk now? I've <laughs> never done this, but left this is the Lefkowitz thing. Send your client their organizational chart, right? <laughs> and this is back before it was easier. That he, he had this thing where you would go and sit out in front of the company and, and do all this research, call in, go through the directory and have the org chart. So when you met him for the first time or you whatever, you email him the org chart and go, look what we did about your company. Imagine what we can do for you as a, as a recruiter and how we're gonna go after your competition and find everybody. Right. That's a ballsy fucking move. I've never done that. But yeah, that it, it brings, I mean, if you have a client that's like, how are you going to find people for me? Send them their fucking organizational chart. They go the same way I found this. And you'll blow their mind. Right. right? Cause they <laughs> don't do that. And this is what you have to understand too. We all do this, right? Your worst pitch. You could call a client up and give them your worst pitch and they'll think it's gold. Tell how you recruit can like like I always say, this is what we do. Hi, my name is Tom Alashio. You and I have spoken before. I'm a head honor. I specialize in the electrical engineering field. We've been retained one of our top clients search for an individual with a high degree of skill in engineering as it relates to uh, electrical design. I've been told by a qualified individual, you're very good in that field. Uh, this is a position that does blah, 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 right? And you tell that to a client, they're like, wow, you call up people and say that? Yeah, that's how we recruit people for you. They don't get that. So you do that and you show them the org chart of their own company and say, we have such a good research team. We could do this for every company. And that's how we're able to get to these passive candidates that aren't looking because we know what the org chart is. Right? That's stuff that other recruiters aren't doing, you know, and, and like my, uh, put, put your wife's name behind, put my number, my number behind your wife's picture. Nobody does that, but fuck it. I do it every time. And I get callbacks. People remember who I am. 
You know, that's what you need to do to separate yourself because every recruiter says, let's connect on LinkedIn. If anything changes, uh, I'll give you a call back. And if any, you know, you know, if you hear anything, let me know. You know, if you know anybody, give me a call, right? Every fucking recruiter does that, right? What are you doing different? What are you doing to make yourself stand out? Whether it's the org chart, whether it's to put your number behind your wife's picture, uh, monkey fucking a football, it doesn't matter, right? Something that's going to get them to recognize who you are. Tom, there's a there's a recruiter <clears throat> that when she's doing when she's doing business development and she's calling oh, companies God. doing business development, she'll leave a voicemail message, something to the effect of, "This is voicemail number three. My manager told me I have to call you twenty times in the next thirty days, so please call me back." <laughs> I love it. There you That's go. Awesome. Not only are they going to call back, that lady's going to be remembered. <laughs> My manager said. <laughs> That's, is that is that starting with uh, the the voicemail number one? No, uh, she's saying this is voicemail number three. That's what I mean. But if you could do that on the first voicemail, <laughs> yeah, well, sure you could. Yeah. I got a book you know, called. But... I'll get back to you. I don't know where it is. I'll have to find it. But yeah. there's some really good, cool tricks in there about getting to return your calls and stuff. And the, the, this is an old one. Hi, Tom. This is Tom Alasio. Uh, a call, and we have this project and seven seven two five three two nine seven eight five. Um, we're looking to build click, right? They don't get the whole message, right? You make the message so they oh. they're like fear of missing out. Oh, he's calling about a project. Right. Holy shit. You know, right? Like, you know, that one, right? There's um calling and saying your their last name. If you're calling Tom Byrne and they call, it's like, who am I saying is calling, please? Oh, Ernie Byrne. And they put you through and they go, Ernie Byrne? No, this is Ernie Moreno. I'm looking for Tom Byrne. Oh, she said your last name was Byrne. Oh, she must have made a mistake. I was asking for you. Right. There's a lot of different ways to skin that cat. And if I could find that right. book, but like those are things that you have to do to get you through to that person. Right. Like there's like everybody says, you know, it's hard to get a hold of people. Yeah, it's fucking hard because now we have caller ID. We have gatekeepers. People love to text, but you can st you got to figure out how to get to them. And it's being obnoxious. It's thinking outside the box. I have fake names. How many of you have fake names? Peter Lemongello. Right. Peter Lemongello. Nick Papagiorgio. Gurn Blanston and Skippy Donahue. Those Salt are my fake fine. names, right? Nick Papa Giorgio, every time they go, oh, I think I talked to you before. Like, no, you watched fucking National Lampoon's Vacation 20 years ago. That's how you got that name, right? But, you know, and, or, yeah. you know, and Rich says, too, like, you say stuff like, hey, uh, you know, have you been to that pizza joint? You know, they used to be on the corner of, of, of Smith and Martin Luther King that sold the big pies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. No, you don't. I made it up. But still, it, it's a connection. It's getting them to, to listen to you and talk to you. You know, no, I think at, the, at the end of the day, what we're trying to figure out is we're actually trying to filter out as many people that we'll never have a chance with or, quote, never have a chance with. And if, if they get time. angry, by the time we, by, by the fifth or sixth or tenth or hundredth call, all we really need to tell them is, listen, I needed to make a decision if you were the type of company I wanted to work with or not. Thank you for letting me know. How many placements do you need to make in a year to make yourself feel good, right? Or how much production do you need? It's not a lot for most people, right? I'm a three to four hundred thousand dollar year production guy. That's what twenty placements, right? That's what four companies. We all act like, oh, I need all these clients. No, get one client that hires four or five people from you a year and three or four onesie twosie clients, and you're doing two hundred and fifty, three hundred thousand dollars in business. Right. It's this is not rocket science, guys. Right. Don't get caught up into I need all these clients or I need all these. Like you get a good search. You're going to have leftover candidates. You can use an MPCs if you do the search right. That's how I started. It was you, you worked on a search. You got three good candidates. They hired one. Now you got two MPCs. Rinse yeah. and repeat. The big the yeah. biggest thing is not to compare yourself to other recruiters. Yeah. Because if you go like, oh, I'm not making a million dollars. I mustn't be good. No, that's there are a lot of things you want to be doing with your life too, as well. But uh, that's what I would say. It, it, it's often, and I and I sound like a broken record with it, but it's thinking outside the box and doing stuff in different, you know, doing some stuff different, different than no one else is doing. Now, granted, if I tell you all to do this and you all start doing it, everybody will be doing it, so I have to think of something else, right? But that's you know, a lot of people aren't doing it. People will watch this video and take all this in and then never do it. They'll never hit zero. They'll never page someone because they're afraid, right? 
They'll never say, put my what put your my phone number behind your wife's picture, your husband's picture. In case you get laid off, you call me first before you call them. Right? People won't say that. They're afraid. But if you find something that works for you that makes you stand out, you're gonna have more success down the road. And and, and, and I'll say it again too. You gotta make the calls and you gotta get better at the calls. You gotta get better. You're gonna get better. The more you calls you make, the better you're gonna get at overcoming objection, the better you're gonna get at throwing rebuttals at them, the better you're gonna get getting around gatekeepers, right? If, you, if someone says to me, I'm happy where I'm at, I know exactly what to say. If someone says my fee's too high, I know exactly what to say. If someone says we don't use recruiters, I know exactly what to say. In fact, I love it when they say I don't use recruiters because I go, Oh, that's awesome. And they go, What? I go, Yeah, I need sources. If you don't ever use recruiters, you're never gonna pay me a fee. So I know where I take candidates from. You want to talk about pissing somebody off, man. That freaked them <laughs> out. When you tell them that they're a source now, right? And I'll teach them never to say, we don't use recruiters. <laughs> Just doing whatever recruiter calls. And, right? and then <laughs> the, this the, is a the, fun the, job. This is a, you get to fuck with people who are mean to you on the phone, right? Someone's a dick to you. Be a dick back. Fuck with them. We got nothing to lose. I love that. <laughs> I love people who are mean to me because that get, allows me to get rid of the bad mood I was in before. Pass that bad mood on, right? And then you hear recruiters say, I don't want to bother them at work. <laughs> yeah, I I can't believe you call somebody at work who's working. Oh, well, I don't have their I don't have their cell phone. I don't know where they live. I know where they are right now. They're sitting at a desk. They don't want to talk to me. They can hang up on me. And if their boss fires them because a recruiter calls them, that's a good thing because they're working for a shitty boss. Yeah, I think if somebody says I can't believe you called me at work, Steve, I'd say you know here's the thing. I work really hard during the day. On after hours and weekends, you you might be you might find me hang gliding, you might find me rock climbing, cross country skiing, backpacking. I sure as hell ain't gonna pick up the phone while I'm enjoying my life after working. Why am I gonna call you? Like, okay, I don't have your cell phone. What's your cell phone number? You want me to call you after hours? What's your cell phone number? Absolutely. See, you you weren't gonna take my call then. If you give me your cell phone number, you're going to block me. So I'm calling you at work, and I'm going to pitch you my job. And if you don't want it, fine. But at least now you know, hey, I have an opportunity in your backyard that can put more money in your pocket, reduce your commute, give you a hybrid work environment with a company that's growing faster and has more opportunity than the one you currently now. If you don't want to talk to me, fine. Honestly, I think part of the issue, and I suffer from this every once in a while, is, and, and Thomas is a great example of, the counter, if you know what you're going to say in a, in a rebuttal, you're going to pick up that phone a lot easier. It's when you don't feel as if you've got something to come either back to them or back at them with or whatever. Okay. It's the courage. When you call someone on a phone, I don't care if it's candidates or clients, right, on a cold call, they're only going to say a couple things to you, right? I'm happy where I'm at. I'm not looking. Yes, I'm interested. They're not going to say I want pepperoni on my pizza, right? All they're going to say is I'm happy where I'm at. I'm not looking. Yes, I'm interested. Why did you call me here? Whatever it is, right? That's all you have to prepare yourself for rebuttal-wise, right? You only have to prepare yourself because you know what they're going to say. They're only going to say a couple things. What are you going to say back to those couple things? You call a client. You pitch him a candidate. We don't need somebody like that. We don't have any openings. Your fee is too high. We don't use outside recruit, whatever it is, right? What are you going to say back when they say those things? Those rebuttals are all out there, right? They, you can go and you can Google them. You can ask ChatGPT. You can ask me. I'll share the stuff that I have. That's all out there. And that's all you have to be prepared for. So when you're making those 50 phone calls to those 50 engineers and you're calling them and you're pitching your job, you got a good pitch, you're selling the company and everything and they say right and they say i'm happy where i'm at you know what they're gonna say i didn't call you because i thought you were unhappy if you're unhappy you'd have called me i called you because i have an opportunity better than one you know, that i yeah or uh, finkel's got what uh, uh uh leverage in your career risk reward ratio risk reward ratio number two he's got six or seven in the in the breakthrough and the other ones that are right there for you I used to have a flip. I used. I made myself a flip chart many years ago with every rebuttal in the world. Yeah, I, I I'd say. print them out and type them out and print them and put them on my new recruiter's desks. Absolutely, along with tape. 
and go, here's what you say if they say this. Here's what you say if they say this. Here's what you say if they say that. And you're right, Tom. The old stuff still works. People are still human. It's just that so many recruiters are relying on emails and texts. And if you pick up that phone call, keep your numbers. It's at the end of the day, when you look at how many people you have contact and actually had a conversation with, which is, as far as I'm concerned, about the only way you can determine which way to go is if you actually have a conversation. I mean, I, I, I've only made one placement without talking. No, I guess, no, I, I was going to say I, I made one placement that took me three minutes because I said, here's your guy. He's going to call you. Send me a check. It was a, it was a two minute conversation and it was a $1,500 placement, but you know, <laughs> you know it, it, it worked, you know, yeah, and so to, to kind of like wrap all this up, I hope everyone got some. I'm sorry, who's talking? Yes, my love. How was your last sense? Max, we can hear you. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, so I just did wrap this up. If does anybody have any questions before I, you know, close the meeting? Anything you want to go over? Anything you want to ask? Anything you want me to show? Uh, screen share, I can show Canbox, anything like that. Anyone? No, I like doing my personal tutorial with you. Right. Okay, I'll, I'll okay. take care of that. Don't we'll worry. I'll one on one. I'll always take care of it. Let's you and I do the Canbox thing as well because I, I want to. I, mean, I, pay I, have, I have I have I have 20 minutes. I can take my wife to an MRI, but I have 20 minutes if you want me to do Canbox right now. Go All for right. it. Okay, I would love okay. that. So I'm going to end the meeting though. I'm not going to do that. So, hey, thanks everybody for stopping by. Uh, you know how to get a hold of me. You know, um, I'm always, I do random acts of kindness every day at, after four o'clock. You want to set up a time, just let me know and I'll help you with anything I can, answer any questions, yada, yada, yada. Have a great week, smile and dial. And until next time, we'll see you at the next recruiter round table. Thanks, everyone. Thomas, do you want to? Yeah, hold on. Let me, I got to turn off the screen. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I didn't know if you wanted me to call you back or not.